Welcome to my lecture on ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance. This is usually the last lecture that I do in my introductory statistics courses. It's usually our last section. Um, so ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. It's called that because it uses the variance quite a bit in the computations, but it's actually a comparison of means. When you have more than two groups, it's an, in some ways it's an extension of the t-test, the two-sample t-test. Because of the problem of multiple comparisons, you know, your p-value being a probability that something occurs by chance, the more often you do it, the more likely it is that it occurs by chance. So you're going to maybe inflate the risk of your type 1 error of making a mistake if you make a conclusion based on a p-value from multiple comparisons. You don't want to do a bunch of separate t-tests if you want to compare the means of multiple groups. So they've developed a method for this called analysis of variance. And there's actually, you can take entire courses on analysis of variance because it's used in different ways in different contexts. We're going to look at what's called the one-way analysis of variance where we have a single variable that we're interested in but we have multiple groups. So for example, suppose that a professor randomly selected nine students from each class standing or whatever you want to call those things, freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior. So he selected nine freshmen nine sophomores, nine juniors, and nine seniors, and ask how many hours per week do you study? And so we have the table here of the actual values. If we're going to use the TI-84, we have to have the actual data for it. You can find different software, nice online applets that will let you put in the summary statistics and do ANOVA, but the, the program on the TI-84 or TI-83 uses the actual data. So in this example, I have the data. I have nine sets of numbers here, or sets of nine numbers here for each of the four groups. So each row represents a group, a grade level, or a class standing at a college, freshman, sophomore, junior, and seniors. And they've reported the number of hours, self-report data here, the number of hours per week that they study. Don't know whether it's for one class or all their classes, but, but this is our data. I've gone ahead and listed the sample means and the sample standard deviations for each one. So you can see, based on this data at this particular college in the problem here. Uh, looks like the amount of study time is increasing from freshman up to senior level. But is there a significant difference? Okay, you have different standard deviations and we know that comes into play, so is there really a significant difference? And this is just a random sample of nine students from each grade level. So can we infer that in the entire population there's going to be a significant difference? in the amount of time they spend studying. That's, that's the problem we want to solve with ANOVA. We're going to compare four means. So the null hypothesis in ANOVA is always the same thing. It's always that all of the means are exactly the same. If I have four groups that mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4, and then the alternative hypothesis would be that there's some difference. Not that they're all different from each other, but there's at least one difference. And so we could do a bunch of independent sample t-tests, but it would take a bunch to do all the comparisons. If we had four groups, there's six different combinations we could look at. We could do freshman, sophomore, freshman, juniors, freshman, seniors, sophomore, juniors, sophomore, seniors, junior, seniors. So there's actually six different t-tests we could do. But then we would run into that problem of multiple comparisons. Okay? And we couldn't trust our p-values the same way we could as if we were doing a single test. So ANOVA is a single way to try to handle this. Okay, so that problem, multiple comparisons, the more times you do a test, the less you can trust those p-values without making type 1 errors. So we want a single overall test that we could do to figure out is there any difference among the parameters we're looking at, in this case, the population means. And then we don't go into the details in this class, in my class, the introductory statistics, but if you find a difference, you can do different types of follow-up analysis to try to decide which groups differ, you know, where are the actual differences. The, let's say here the follow-up analysis can be quite complex. There's other classes you can study on ANOVA to learn those types of things, but we're just going to mainly focus on the overall test. So the ANOVA, the analysis of variance, and the statistic is called F, so sometimes the analysis of variance F test is what you hear. But again, the null hypothesis is that there's no difference among all of the means of my different populations where I have more than two. If I had two, I could do a t-test. Um, so the basic conditions, all of your groups, you have to have simple random samples, random samples from all of your groups. You want the population to be normally distributed, or if it's not and you're looking at means, you want large sample sizes to apply the central limit theorem. Um, 
again, let me point out that the alternative hypothesis is not just to slap not equals on the whole thing. It's not that they're, none of them are equal, but it's that there's some difference, that at least one. They say it's a many-sided hypothesis. Okay, there's lots of ways that the null hypothesis can be false. Um, and it's called the analysis of variance F-test, or just ANOVA for short. In particular, we're doing the one-way ANOVA. Um, and the really important idea and why the computations use variance is if you look at these two pictures here, these are some nice pictures I got from a textbook. If you look across them, the three means in picture A are exactly the same as the three means in picture B. So the difference in the means are the same. But in picture A, the groups are more spread out than they are in group B. If I were to do random sampling and my data is really spread out, then I would expect to get random sample values all over the place. And I might expect a big difference in means just from the random sampling. But if my groups are not very spread out, when I do random sampling, the numbers are going to be pretty close together just because they're not spread out very much. So differences that I detect over here in these three groups in picture A are going to be less significant than differences that I detect over here in group B. If your data is very spread out, you would expect to find some pretty big differences in your sample means as compared to if your data is not very spread out. So analysis of variance has to take into account how spread out the data are, which is, we can measure by variance. And so again, the big idea is that the more spread out the data is, the larger the differences are going to be when you take random samples. So you have to find even bigger differences to find significant differences by the hypothesis test.